uh, Pushpa can give it over and then we can reach out to you as well, Sirisha, so that you can share your, uh, you know, overall experience and what all do you know, both from Workday and apart from Workday as well. Uh, sounds good? Mm, yeah, sure. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I hope you have seen my trainer profile as well. So in terms of industry experience, uh, uh, I carry more than 10 plus years of experience in both SAP, HCM and Workday side of things. Uh, specific to Workday, uh, I would say worked on multiple international client implement implementations. Uh, not just one module, I think uh, the, the expansion, from an expansion point of view, started with HCM, which you already know is the core part of things, and then worked on multiple areas, including time tracking, absence, compensation, recruiting, uh, payroll as well. So like you have, you must have seen Workday being a very connected system. These all modules talk to each other. Uh, so during the training as well, I'll talk a lot of connection points as well, uh, where, you know, you will understand how different modules talk to each other. So that would be my objective, the training. And I believe in terms of my, one of the key things which I expect from the training, uh, you know, from the other side is, you know, you should be, you know, very much open about any questions which you have. You should understand things, you know, you can always, you know, cross question and understand or ask questions so that, you know, it becomes a good value add for you as well. So that's pretty much my introduction in terms of, uh, you know, overall uh, training delivery as well as, uh, you know, experience. Apart from that, within the training, what we have is, you know, very specific targeted approach on the time tracking side, right? So we'll initially, at least in the today session, we'll talk about a lot of basics and everything, but uh, we can talk more once the intro part is over. Uh, so, all right. Uh, so workday, uh, workday time tracking, I would say within all the modules uh, is one of the key modules. The reason being, you know, this module is kind of very much interconnected to payroll side of things. A lot of companies use, uh, you know, workday time tracking because of multiple aspects. Uh, the key aspects would be, you know, how do you manage the employee time? which is very much known, you know, obviously it is very straightforward that time tracking would be used for, uh, you know, managing employee time, but within the time tracking side of things, there are other aspects as well, which are, you know, assigning different schedules, uh, you know, tracking time, managing absences and payroll side of things. So let's jump on to the slides and then we can talk more about it because, you know, you should probably understand how exactly it works from a time tracking perspective. Uh, but before that, there are certain uh, disclaimers and certain uh, policies which we wanted to cover as well. Uh, you know, these uh, these slides, examples, and the content is you know very much for information only. Obviously, uh, this is obviously copyrighted by Zaran Tech. You know, these are very specific time tracking modules. Uh, you know, obviously, you should you know on the legal side of things, obviously, it should not be transmitted in any means, and you know. Uh, you know, there are certain images, obviously, which are open source or, you know, certain images we are which are copyrighted as well. So just wanted to share that disclaimer as well to you. All right. Now, before we talk about, you know, overall, uh, you know, key things for today, I think uh, first session, which uh, Pushpa and I wanted to cover is more on the, you know, the introduction part of things. We want to take a lot of time to give you more understanding of the module, reason being, uh, from your experience, what I understand is you have certain amount of uh, knowledge in terms of, you know, interaction part of things. Uh, but, uh, obviously, you know, within the module, there could be certain areas, which, which are, you know, very much specific. So we'll talk about that, not just limited to the slides. We'll talk in general, the industry experience part of things as well, uh, to you. Okay. And in terms of introduction, we will talk about multiple aspects that what are the benefits and, you know, what are the key areas are there within time tracking, uh, you know, especially on the workday side of things uh, that how exactly it talks to different modules, then, you know, we will talk a little bit about, you know, the next three items, which are, you know, more on the hands on side, but we'll tell, you know, how, how to approach it, you know, what should you be thinking if someone to, tells you, you know, that you have to set up time tracking or you have to, you know, change certain time code groups or you have to, you know, uh, make sure the time entry setup is being corrected, you know, so. I would be talking about each and everything in detail from two aspects as well. One is obviously, you know, vanilla config, you know, very uh, straightforward. How do you build things? And second one would be more on the correction side of things as well. So in the upcoming sessions, we'll talk more about that uh, 
but uh, today the session would be more on the intro and you know the basic side of things all right hope you can see the next slide as well uh, and if you have any questions in between sirisha you can you can uh, you know jump in in between uh, all right yes, sure. awesome yeah work day time tracking obviously i think if you compare it with sap if you compare with a lot of uh, you know industry applications i think the one of the key things which work day time tracking is very strong in as you know how it is very much focused towards end user the ui part of things once we deep dive into things you will understand it is very much focused towards the ease of access be it from the employee side of things you know uh, that how employee logs in uh, what are key features are there you know the ease of doing access those kind of areas so from a, from that perspective it is very much you know i would say consumer driven or the end user driven so if you if you think of multiple participants uh, within hr technology system right there would be obviously end users who are actually logging the time right people working in shifts people working in factories and everything right so to make things intuitive i think work day time tracking is one of the key things you know it is very simple uh, ui which is which is very easy to use one of the key factors is that additionally i think uh, from work day time tracking the good part is you know how do we link the global policies so a lot of modules have certain limitations to have you know the overall setup being done for a country from start to end right it requires more of an effort so let me give you an example for that you know let's say uh, i'm sure within the sap side of things right there could be uh, you know let's say you, you are implementing it for one country uh, let's say india right and uh, there are certain uh, your company expands to china as well right uh, and you have india and china so a lot of components would be very much specific to india and china right sometimes for sap or beat uh, oracle systems or success factors right the effort required is a lot in terms of doing things you know uh, a lot of setup or basic set of th uh, of things are replicated but in workday time tracking i would say a lot of uh, things can be used globally so one of the key factors which which is easy to deploy is you know you can deploy workday time tracking comparatively faster right so that is one of the things mm -hmm. okay. yeah because uh, if you compare with typical sap cycles right i'm i'm sure you must have seen uh, you know it requires a certain amount of changes in the spro then you know changing in the table side of things changing you know a lot on the ui sometimes as well on the ABAP side of things as well you have to gen, you know have some logics there and then finally that information is used by sap payroll or you know sent outside to a different vendor mm -hmm. but in case of workday I, I think the key advantage which you will surely see is you know it's more faster in terms of you know customization most more faster in terms of integration and uh, more faster or more connected to multiple modules right you don't have to you know customize a lot of things uh, between uh, you know these modules there are a lot of connections already built in as well uh, and and let's talk about that you know before i move to the second topic uh, second uh, pointer right uh, imagine uh, an end user right who uses company's payroll obviously he or she gets paid for that a and you know the person is using absence as well the person is using time tracking as well you know everything from all module perspective right so how one module talks to another is very different or very interconnected within workday for example let's take a scenario that employee is you know taking a holiday right employee is a time tracking user employee has to log in and log out right the person belongs to you know uh, the users who have to log in and log out right then for them how exactly these modules are connected you know that matters a lot so let's say the person's work schedule right the person mm -hmm. is required to work from monday to friday right and let's say on on a friday the person is you know saying okay uh, the person is you know applying a sick leave right what is the impact on the time tracking side of things you know how how exactly he or she will be paid right that can be set at one time you know and that will follow uh, from that perspective it won't be like that you know absence has to send information separately to payroll 
you can build things to you know either be driven from time tracking side of things as well so let mm-hmm. me give you a more example of that a person can technically apply their time offs or absence from the time tracking side of things so that everything related to their presence and absence is sent from time tracking hope it is understandable right sirisha uh, mm-hmm. you understood this one right so on the app, in the scp side of things right you have you know certain areas of applying an absence right and certain screen to apply you know your uh, you know time basically you know login and logout times you can technically build workday time tracking to either receive the absence information directly or indirectly and you can drive a lot of things either from workday time tracking as well so persons absence information can be driven from time tracking side of things or from the absence module as well so there are multiple ways of doing that we'll talk more about it when, once we talk about in in you know future modules okay. all right mm-hmm. so how about the landscape like you know once you do customization like similar to sap like we have like multiple landscapes for moving mm-hmm. changes sure uh, so let let me talk about more on the intro side of workday as well i believe okay. i think that that would be important for you reason being you know uh, you know uh, so you know within within sap right you have a you know usually a gold system right which is you know kind of the key config system there is a production system there is a quality system and uh, you know there are certain dev systems as well right from mm-hmm. there you move your transport of the configuration from one tenant to another right I, on the sap side of things right you use uh, you know stms and underscore import and you know these kind of activities which are for, right. which are falling under sap basis you mm-hmm. perform a change and you move it uh, between uh, these areas right right but within workday so you know i'm i'm you know deviating from the tap or topic but this is important for you uh, we can take more time on, on the foundation side of things mm-hmm. within workday uh, you have different instances right so sap is different from workday reason being workday is a saas application where everything you know you, ju- you just need a browser with a link with a login id and password and you can access it is as good as facebook or instagram or any other website right as good good as anything which can be run on an internet right that's it so all the configuration side of things as well so within sap you are using sap application and you are using you know uh, uh spro going to the ten, uh, you know going to the configuration reaching out, you know going through that application sap application gui and then changing things within workday everything whatever you do happens on the browser only you would be able to access the configuration changes on the browser you would be able to work as an end user on the browser you would be able to you know do a lot of things you know so everything is related to just the browser screen in terms of the functional part of things sirisha if mm-hmm. you talk about integrations integrations as well to a majority of the extent falls under the browser but there are certain uh, integrations like studio integrations where you require a certain installation on top of you know the browser as well so you have any questions on that you know i'll explain more about it but before that i want to know you know um, if you have any questions no i'm good thanks awesome so there is in in workday there is a production instance which is the live system right mm-hmm. then there is something called a sandbox which is mm-hmm. just a copy of production which which refreshes with the production information on a weekly basis right mm-hmm. and there is a sandbox preview as well which which is more of you know so these are different instances or the copies of the system right so sandbox preview again is very much specific to workday releases so workday as a product provide two different releases every year right with the new features and everything so that falls under sandbox preview tenant so tenant is n- nothing but just a copy something like a quality right so it's just a copy of the original system okay mm-hmm. and then there are different implementation tenants and implementation tenants are nothing but you know your test environments where you develop the work and you move or you know you test it out right mm-hmm. within the workday instances right usually as someone who is doing the configuration everything is intact you know all the modules are in the same 
area you know it's nothing like that you know that this instance is just for work day absence or this instance is just for work day time tracking no everything would be interconnected and you know mm -hmm. as soon as you change things you know you can move from one tenant to another not using transport but using certain areas certain capabilities which are object transporters and you know solutions and all those things so we can talk more about that you know how do we migrate but yes. uh, but you know uh, but very high level i think this was the key thing which which i wanted to convey as well you know so just imagine workday being a browser system having mm -hmm. multiple instances having you know uh, different copies of it but obviously anything moving to production technically from a path perspective should go via sandbox system you know it should ideally go via quality usually in sap side of things same ways we are you know expecting that if you follow the standard approach it will go through the sandbox okay mm -hmm. okay and sandbox is something which is very close to the production data right in the real world of things you know let's say you are facing some issue some user is unable to access something and obviously in production data you don't have you know every access so what is the closest system where you can check and troubleshoot which is sandbox right it is mm -hmm refreshed on a weekly basis and you know uh, you can try out different things so sandbox is very critical in terms of your work day journey as well sirisha so okay. you have to you know make note of that that how important sandbox is right all right uh, now moving moving ahead so within within i would say uh, time tracking right time tracking is very much interconnected to certain specific modules which are like really really close you cannot think of time tracking without that right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the first one is workday hcm i think workday hcm again it is simple as pa and om on sap you know all mm -hmm. the basic job profile data all the basic eligibility information all the basic uh, you know organization information cost centers job profiles you know anything on the basic level of things company code you know everything end to end falls under hcm right mm -hmm. so hcm would be the core setup so we, without hcm you cannot implement time tracking number one hcm mm -hmm. is the number one module which has to be implemented you know so mm -hmm. hcm would have you know all the hcm is primarily on the human capital management about you know employee profile employee address employee uh, you know details about you know different transactions and everything like mm -hmm. you know person applying uh, you know any hiring transaction termination transaction any change of transaction anything related to usual hr stuff it's fall it falls under hcm so hcm is the key basic module which is anyways required for all the modules it is the mother of all modules actually so firstly mm -hmm. hcm should be there and within hcm and time tracking right it would be more on you know interconnection how exactly uh, hcm and time tracking talk right so hcm mm -hmm. as a module is just think of it providing a lot of information about employee type right me mm -hmm. as an uh, employee as raj versus pushpa versus you right we belong to different locations different entities different areas our employee type can vary right you can be full time mm -hmm. i can be part time you know it can vary depending on cert depending on the job profiles as well you can be someone you know managing an operations team i can be someone who doesn't require using time tracking so all that information comes from hcm mm -hmm. right the core information about an employee comes from hcm the logic is built on the time tracking side right for example if someone is eligible for time tracking i know i'm going deep on you know technicals but this is important for you to understand you know i can you know skip these parts and directly jump on tenant but i think this is really important for you to understand sirisha yes you know sure. uh, how exactly you know it module works right for time tracking to you know have a good configuration or information mm -hmm. you know you can you can have you know uh, you know inputs from you know uh, hcm right mm -hmm. it drives a lot of things and uh, from hcm side of things you know in terms of eligibilities you know you can 
think of time tracking as a module where it is more of a receiver of information, right? So imagine mm -hmm. time tracking on one side of a room and, you know, it seems sending a lot of information to that, you know, to drive the eligibility to drive a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now talking to payroll, because you were interested in that part of things, right? How payroll works mm -hmm. specifically, right? Uh, with, mm -hmm. with time tracking. Mm -hmm. So obviously payroll, from your journey of SAP as well, Sirisha, let me ask a question. How exactly, you know, what would be the flow for an employee? <clears throat> because I want it to be a dialogue so that I understand that how much you are grasping as well. Accordingly, I can tone down my, uh, you know, pace and, you know, complexity as well. So let's talk about workday uh, payroll or SAP payroll, for example. How exactly would a person get paid, right? Let's talk about that. Can you can you probably share your input, you know, thought process between SAP modules? How would the information would be flowing? So in general, uh, certain um, like uh, HR uh, data needs to be uh, needed for processing payroll, like employee details, and then uh, mm -hmm. time data. So for in a few instances, uh, time is already evaluated out of the system. So the, in that scenarios, the time integration need to be done with an external system. Mm -hmm. In some instances, we just get uh, the raw data like absences and attendances, and the time needs to be evaluated in the system. So once we have the time inf information, um, then like all the basic earnings deductions or mm -hmm. employee salary, those kind of mm -hmm. components need to be set up. So then once the payroll is triggered, so obviously like um, like all your gross net calculation. Mm -hmm. done. Okay. Along with benefits and garnishment uh, details. Awesome. In simple terms, totally agree with that. In simple terms, within within workday, right? Let's let's look at someone. You know, uh, let's look at employee journey, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm joining your team. You know, I'm joining uh, your location. Let's say, or I'm joining from you know any other location as well. Let's say I'm an employee based out in you know uh, China. Okay, mm -hmm. so I join in in the company the first module where I'll be interacting indirectly or directly would be the HCM where it will talk about my home location. It will talk about my office location. It will talk about my job profiles. It will talk about my address. If it will talk about my emergency contacts, it will talk about, you know, my overall manager name. It will talk about my uh, unit name. It will talk about my coworkers. It will talk about my compensation, you know, indirectly, indirectly. Right. Mm -hmm. It will talk about my job profile as well. Now, mm -hmm. as an employee, you know, as Raj joining the China office, right? Mm -hmm. I am a time tracking employee. Okay. I need to log in and log out mm -hmm. to drive my eligibility to be eligible for that. You know, the information would be flowing from HCM, right? My employee type is really important. My location mm -hmm. would be really important and my job profile would be important. It won't be like that, you know, every China employee in that location would be logging time. There would be certain managers, certain directors, certain people who are not even logging, right? Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. they don't need to because of their job profiles. So time tracking is one. Now, I being an employee is, you know, uh, getting certain paid time offs or absences and certain unpaid ones as well. Let's say I get, you know, for first year, I don't get anything from the company, right? Only after first year, I'll get something. And let's say as an employee, I need to take an urgent emergency, you know, absence for two days. I won't be available for next week, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. So that also a key factor. Okay. So there are two parts of it now. Number one, time tracking. So let's say for the first week, I'm working from Monday to Friday, logging hours. And next week I am, you know, uh, taking two days off and next three days I'm working, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. And mm -hmm. let's say it is the end of the month. I'm getting paid, you know, China being a monthly one, let's say mm -hmm. I'm getting paid now for workday payroll to receive information. There are, there would be at least two factors here. No, mm -hmm. Number one, you know, on the absence that I'm taking two days extra, which ideally I should have, you know, worked on, but I was unable to, then those two days salary would be reduced, you know, prorated. Ideally, I, I should be paid for 10 days, considering, you know, 10 working days in two weeks, but I will be paid only for how many days? Eight days. Awesome. Now, in eight days, there would be certain times where 
you know, I'm required to work for eight hours, you know, mm-hmm. within eight hours, let's say on my first day, I was very excited as an uh, employee mm-hmm. and I work for 12 hours. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Then you, ha- you should have a logic, you know, then as a time tracking configuration, if the employee works extra, how they will be paid? Will they be paid, you know, certain dollars to it, or they are just expected to work for eight hours? or there would be certain rules to it, you know, all those things, all those things are handled within time tracking. You know, if you are paid less as well, for, for example, if the employee is taking a half day or employees working just for six hours, how exactly it will be paid? You know, how about the employee meal breaks in between? How exactly employee would be paid? All that logic, all that, you know, uh, information in the background is configured in time tracking okay. module. Understood? Right. And again, like usually like it depends upon the employee, like whether it's an exempt or non-exempt, right? So based Correct. on the employee and also be, uh, depends upon the work location. If it's a California, like it's a different time of uh, type of calculation. Exactly. Right. Exactly. California state law will come into the picture where, you know, uh, certain meal breaks would be required, you know, uh, let's say, uh, you know, Germany has certain rules to it, you know, female employees need to take this much break, you know, certain employees need to take this much break as well. Uh, uh, so all these things are kind of driven, but you know, uh, you should not look at exempt and non exempt, you know, that is very much US specific, that is true. And obviously, that mm-hmm. is a factor. But it could be as simple as, you know, someone working in China office of this location, having this job profile are eligible for time tracking. So okay. it is very much customizable. It cannot, it can be driven based on, you know, as simple as, you know, someone working from this location altogether or someone falling under this job profile. Right. Mm-hmm. So all these things can be, you know, it is very, I would say flexible in terms of driving that. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, finally, this employee getting paid for 10 days coming to our example. Right. So there are two mm-hmm. contributing factors to it. Number one, obviously the absence part of things. Number mm-hmm. two is time tracking. Number three, let's talk about number three now. Not about, you know, you don't have to look at the slides. Number three would be, you know, let's say the employee was, you know, joining on a holiday, right? So for holiday, employee will be paid or not, right? That is also a consideration. Holiday, which is workday, you know, holidays and calendars, right? depending on the location it it is also connected to time tracking so now you know three things are surely connected to time tracking one is hcm one is absence you know one is obviously payroll and obviously one of the components which is there connected to all this is workday calendars you know holidays public holidays the overall calendar which you put in right mm-hmm. jordan okay perfect now there is something called period schedules as well uh, which we'll talk more about in the system, but you know, there is something called period schedule and work schedule. Just imagine this as, you know, someone like a rotation system as an employee, if you are expected to work Monday to Friday, nine to five, right. That is logged in that, uh, work schedule. And if there is some pattern to it, you know, every third Friday, you'll be working for, you know, one hour late or on the night shift, all those things are logged in that as well. So if you see, Sirisha, everything is interconnected, you know, the work pattern of the employee is interconnected. The holidays are interconnected, absence is interconnected, payroll is interconnected, and obviously HCM, right? You understood the work schedule part of things as well, right? Which we'll talk more, right? Mm, yeah. Yes. Because an employee, if let's say the employee schedule tells the employee to work at nine to six, right? And mm-hmm. there is a change to it, you know. Every last, you know, last week of the month, the employee has to work on a night shift, let's say. So mm-hmm. depending on that, every rule will be driven as well. Right, right. All your schedule, your day offs, your holidays, everything will be assigned to the work schedule. Correct, correct. And as we talk more about it, think of, mo- I'll probably give you one thing to think about it. Someone mm-hmm. working on a night schedule, right? And obviously mm-hmm. there would be midnight, you know, there would be day change. So there are additional complexities added on top of that. So you have to think oh. about that as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. As we talk more about the config in future, it would be more when... Uh, uh, you mm-hmm. know, we'll talk more about it and we'll do hands-on. We can talk more about mm-hmm. that. But in simple terms, uh, you know, Workday Projects is also one of the modules which is primarily driven, you know, more f- for, you know, 
project side of things where employee log there is hours based on certain activity you know mm-hmm. let's say there are a team of consultants in the team and they need to log hours based on certain activities so they use work day, work day projects but work day projects is nothing but very much closely connected to time tracking it has mm-hmm. additional features as well which are more towards you know budgeting and you know logging the overall estimate of employees and how much is you know the b- billing and everything but you don't have to worry too much about it first we'll cover you know the objective of this training is more towards time tracking but as you learn time tracking it would be very easy to understand the interconnection part of things as well so work day projects is something similar to employee self service no so work day projects if i tell you in simple terms you know work day projects is a capability where you can drive a project within work day for example you can log hours you know how this hour which is logged is linked to certain activity those kind of things as a manager imagine you are driving a project there are 20 employees who are working for a certain project right for each and every type of activity they can log their hours on in a day so it is an enhancement on top of time tracking obviously it would be an ess capability but it would be even an mss capability as well so every capability has two parts of it obviously which is employees self right employee self service and manager self service but there would be admin, admin part of things as well so work day projects is more towards you know even though employees can log data and log out you know information based, based on certain activities but this would be more on uh, you know how the admins look at the data and how admins you know kind of drive you know certain decisions on top of that right and we can talk more work day projects in simple terms is just a way of capturing time in a more meaningful way in a more uh i would say organized way and very direct way let me give you an example for that time tracking you are just entering hour from 9 to 6 you don't have to worry that what all activity you did right you are just logging in an employee of uh, you know organization work day projects would have certain additional pointers to it where you have to log in hours based on certain activity and that would be used for further reporting and you know tracking purposes okay sirisha you understood this one sorry yeah yes raj sure all right uh yeah so like like i said right it is more of an end to end experience you know uh, and uh, you know this this capability of time tracking right i'm sure you are aware that time tracking being being a module can be used on obviously web browser you can web log in on the web browser as well you can use your mobile phones as well to log your hours you know if the mobile time tracking is enabled mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. finally a time time clock you know where you know in your office gates there will be swipe in swipe out and you know it is indirectly logging the information and sending it to uh work day the last one from time tracking side of things imagine so first one and the second one is clear right web and mobile it is obviously work day it would be directly receiving the information right mm-hmm. on the third one which is physical clock right which is swipe in and swipe out in offices right certain kaba clocks are there certain different type of clocks are there but those are kind of you know uh, i would say in simple terms storing that information and sending it to work day system using a certain integration which are time clock integrations which are you know basically all the information of swipe in and swipe out is given as input to work day and then the processing of that data happens okay yeah got it yes hope this uh, you know the basic overview is clear to you sirisha right uh, pushpa anything to add on top of that uh, just wanted your you know your thoughts as well so that it would be useful for sirisha yeah that is it's a great explanation so the basic is yeah it is very important to understand the basic you have covered well on the work day time tracking side um so uh, work day how it works is work day it has a single user experience and single global platform and the, there is a single source of truth where we are managing the employee data we are collecting the employee data and then we the employee schedule will be assigned automatically let's say the employee is working on any particular shift like morning shift or evening shift or afternoon shift so depending on the employee working schedule so it will be auto schedule uh, in workday 
and also it tracks the time. So the employee will have the capability to go log in, like check in and check out. So the employee will have a very uh, single user experience for the tracking of the data, uh, for tracking of the data, like to check in, check in and check out time for the hourly employees. And also it manages the absence. Let's say if any employee is taken, has taken any paid time off or employee has taken any sick time off. Okay, so for the time tracking tool, it also track the absence for any employee. Okay, let's say in a week, the employee is scheduled is, uh, let's say eight hours in a particular set time, okay? And when the employee is taking any absence, so for that day, the employee will be getting paid, but the system will notice that, okay, the employee has taken the time off on a particular day, okay? So it is also very easy uh, in work day to track the data and they manage the absence, the schedule will be assigned. And then the data, the final data will be sending over to the payroll for the processing. Okay. So why we are why we are tracking the time? So ultimately, when we are tracking the employee uh, working hours, so there is, I mean that there is impact on the payroll. So employee will get paid accordingly based on the number of working hours. Let's say if employee is working on an overtime or if employee is working on any of the premium shift hours, right? Um, so for that, the data will be collected and then will be sending you over to the payroll, whether it is a workday payroll or it is a third party payroll. So there will be different system will be connected. So if it is a workday payroll within workday, this data will from the absence, the data will move over to the payroll. Um, but consider there is, uh, we are not using workday payroll and there is a third party payroll, like we have the ADP or ENY or any other uh, payroll vendor, right? So the workday will be connected via our integration. And from workday, there will be, this data will be sending over via integrations to the outside of the payroll, which is our ADP system or any other vendor the organization is using for. So this is how is the workday concept, like workday time tracking uh, concept is, the workday time tracking is managed from end to end entire system in a single um, platform where it is easy to collect the data and process the time tracking, uh, time hours, schedule hours, and then process it to payroll for further processing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, Pushpa. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, Sirisha, are you aware of uh, integration as such? What exactly workday integrations mean versus uh, typical tech work? Are you aware of workday integrations, how exactly it works? Mm, I mean, I have little idea, but no. I mean, yeah. I just have like little or um oral idea that's it yeah, yeah i think uh, for time tracking understanding that would be basic i believe we can talk uh, you know i can probably talk about it as well so that you know you can understand and uh, thanks pushpa for bringing that as up as well it won't be a case where you know you are always using workday payroll as well right you might have to send information as well right, so right. We, we can talk about that specific scenario as well so that you understand more from that perspective there would mm -hmm. be certain connections which are very, uh, you know, unique in a way as well. Uh, but right now, since since we are going uh, for the first session, how exactly are you liking the pace? Or do you want uh, me to keep it slower or a bit faster? Or you like more examples? How exactly it is for you uh, till now in terms of understanding the basics? I think the pace is good, Raj. Let's go like this. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to like relate my understanding with overall time and payroll process so yeah i mean i think we are good at going in good space and we covered like most of the high level aspects sure sure uh, the reason why i'm uh, asking this is because uh, you know uh, i we could have probably uh, approached this slide in a very different fashion where you know we are not talking a lot about it but I think mm -hmm. considering your experience since you know HCM, right? And uh, mm -hmm. then since you have not worked on any other module as such, right? So mm -hmm. that's where I'm trying to, you know, uh, give you a ho more holistic picture because no module in this uh, ecosystem would work separately that you can tell, okay, I work in time tracking, 
without hcm basic knowledge without it, the overall basic knowledge it would be next to impossible to work on that as well so that's where i'm focusing more on foundation part of things as well so probably first two class especially first today today's class as well as tomorrow's class what uh, we will do is you know talk more about the basics because uh, you know the system configuration is one part but understanding how exactly it works is another part as well right so it should not be the case to give you an example that you know someone is changing a configuration but not understanding the impact of it right uh, because impact can be huge end to end you know so that that is also a consideration in terms of uh, one of the key things which i will talk more about is on the touch point side of things as well right and you know how exactly it talks uh, to different modules so sirisha one of the pointers which we were talking right uh, was more about integrations right which uh, pushpa as well mentioned that you know there could be certain scenarios where we are not using uh, workday payroll as a module right mm -hmm. or workday benefits as a module or you know you are not utilizing workday capability completely and i'm sure in your previous experience as well uh, sap being a strong module obviously sap is very robust on the payroll side of things as well but not everyone uses uh, you know every module of the same hcm suit there are companies which will prefer you know having a hcm of sap time tracking of chronos payroll of a certain vendor right so i'm sure you must have heard about chronos as well which are you know into time tracking they are specialized into time tracking solutions right so these systems should be interconnected right that is one of the key things which uh, which you should think that how these systems talk to each other right for example your company might be using workday but you would be paid out by let's say certain vendor right so how this information is going from workday to that one vendor that's where i think uh, the whole integrations piece comes into the picture right and workday being an hcm system you'd have a certain other systems as well where you might need to send information right for example you your company might be using a reporting tool or your company might be using certain tools where you need information coming in from workday right some report should be there from a legal standpoint uh, you were talking about california right sirisha so for california state let's say there is some rule that on a every quarter basis the organization has to provide the list of employees working you know more than 45 hours per week right so there should be certain output file which is going from workday system to a specific system where it is being received you know by output i mean it can be an excel file it can be an automated generated file it can be a scheduled run as well so there are a lot of parts of it right there could be certain bad jobs as well which i'm to, uh, using workday uh, i'm using sap terms for you so that it is easier to understand so there could be certain bad jobs as well which are running on a quarterly basis on a monthly basis to send this information right so Sirisha, hope you are understanding, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So all these functional modules as such, if you see HCM, workday payroll, absence management, projects, you know, compensation, absence, you know, recruiting, all these different modules talk to each other. But in terms of talking, since they, if we are using workday time tracking only, right? If you are using just workday time tracking, these modules talk to each other using standard logic you don't have to worry too much you don't have to do anything extra as such to convey information right mm -hmm. but if you see you have a certain system which is outside the workday scope of things right you need to send that information that's where workday integrations come into the picture workday integrations are nothing but you know certain lines of codes where you are extracting the information from workday system and sending it outside number one or you are receiving the information from a certain system for example let's say you are using time clocks right you are mm -hmm. not using employees are not logging their hours on workday system or on their mobile devices they are using a certain clock they are going to office 
imagine a production company you know you are building cars and uh, you know employees workers join at 9 am and leave at 9 pm it's a 12 hour shift for them production shift they don't use systems they don't use mobiles they don't have those configurations and the company wants their physical presence to that factory right that organization that's where a physical time clock will receive the information and in terms of receiving you know as soon as the information is received you know there would be a certain logic to it where this information is sent to workday system right in terms of workday system what connection do you need you would need an integration so anything outside the system you need to connect you would need an integration both as an input and output right imagine in simple terms imagine this being a water filter imagine workday being a water filter there would be an inlet pipe usually the raw water tap water you know and there would be an mm -hmm. output file which uh, output water which is a filtered water right so these two connections which are typically the pipes and all this plumbics and all right in terms of receiving the water as well as you know re releasing the water right those are integrations both input and output right so these Brilliant. two systems connect to each other it is very simple for you to understand hopefully Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. and all the mechanism within water filter you know all these ma machines and you know the purification system all the logic that is workday system that is workday time tracking workday hcm workday absence management workday payroll anything you know so in simple terms that is the easiest way of understanding how integrations work in work into the picture right awesome uh mm -hmm. Hope is hope it is uh, important. Uh, you know uh, it is clear to you. Reason being, uh, within time tracking, right? Like uh, Pushpa as well mentioned, right? There would be certain scenarios where you are not using workday payroll, or you are sending out information outside for processing, right? Then that outside logic is done using the integrations only. That outside logic is just the filtered water, right? Which we are sending out. to send out that filter water we need a tap right from the filter so that tap and that outlet is workday integrations receiving this workday and processing this workday time tracking information and sending out in the format which is accepted by the you know vendor or the third party system right mm -hmm. awesome uh let's move on and i'll probably uh, give uh, you know this one you know uh probably pushpa can deep dive into it you know first and uh, uh and i can add on top of that so pushpa over to you you, you can talk about you know the overall uh self service time entry the different reasons of you know you know how exactly workday consumer driven user experience uh, works so pushpa over to you yeah thank you raj yeah so let's um uh... now discuss more about like how it is like how workday time tracking how it improves the productivity for any organization and how is the uh, user experience you know that is which is main which is the we have the that there are a lot of hr application but how workday is a, a like one of the good user experience application that that will track the time and it is a seamless time tracking system like from the end to end like when you consider about we are collecting the employee data and then we are processing it and then we are automating to the payment directly the hours will be calculated and then it will process to the payroll okay so it is important very much important to understand how the work day in work day how the time tracking what are the options to enter time Uh, in workday so first let's talk about um, the self service time entry so when we say the self service time entry so there are multiple ways to enter time in workday uh, one of the uh, option is the user will go to the workday tenant so in workday for every system we call as like you say that sap production right so here mm -hmm. in workday we called uh, as a tenant okay like we call as a work day production tenant then book a sandbox tenant or if there are let's say multiple uh, development tenant or uat tenant so what we call a system as a individual tenant in work day so the employee can directly uh, they can go log into the work day tenant and based on the employee security right so consider that uh, we 
it, we have a, we are in a global organization okay and we have employed from different different um, country like us india and different geographic locations right so the employee will log into the workday browser and employee will based on the employee security so the time tracking is a concept right um, it also has like every country has their own way of time tracking and it has their own legal laws and regulations right when you say that us us uh, sometimes like you are talking about the california um, hourly employees right the exempt non exempt employee okay mm -hmm. so that is very specific to the california as a state where we are legally the system we have to build a system in a such a way that we are legally tracking time based on the us california level level laws okay so mm -hmm. the uh, so that is one option is the employee will log into the system and then as a web browser and then when the employee will be logging into the that will be option called the time right so when the employee is going to the record the time so if the employee is located in us and california so based on the calendar there will be one calendar view is going to be pop up like where it is totally configured based on the employee where the employee is located okay so they consider the employee is working in california and belong to us so immediately the tenant in the system the all these you know the rules the calculation it the um, time sheet will appear based on the system that we have set up for that particular country okay so the employee will log into the web browser and then the employee will have a view called the uh, calendar view where the employee is going to enter the time like it is um, more similar uh, to our sap uh, system right in sap we have cats the cross application time sheet where the employee can go and record the uh, time or there are any third party system right where we are collecting the time data from a different system and then that will be collected and then uh, entered into the workday so similarly here it is like in sap here in workday also there are different way to log in the time okay um and also there are options to log in to the uh, employee can record the time using the mobile device so when the employee is uh, logging into a mobile device again the ui is going to be little bit different than our workday uh, web browser but entire application the functionality everything is going to be remain same okay we can uh, you know cover it more when we deep dive into the um, chapter again more detail like when we log into the tenant but for your right now for you to understand so employee can log in to the web browser as well as the employee can log in using the mobile devices okay and time can also be entered against the project let's say the employee is um, assigned to multiple project right the employee based on the allocation let's say employee is assigned to project 1 um 50% and another project as project 2 as 50% okay so in work day we can have a options to track time based on the project the employee is uh, assigned for okay and based on the task also let's say if employee is attending any particular conference um, then employee has the ability to record the time based on the you know conference or if they are going for uh, utilizing that time for any of the team event also there is like based on the different different task wise the employee or the work they have the have a option to record their time based on the task okay mm -hmm. and uh, it is very easy to access easy to access in a calendar view so when uh, we say the time entry right the time tracking so the employee whenever the employee is going to record any time so immediately system will pop up a calendar view it is based on a month daily or a weekly view okay so in a week 
again in the system there are different like what could be your start of the week how you want to, to configure in the system based on that uh, your calendar will be appear pop up and for each day you can see how much uh, hour how many hours the employee has logged in for and for which activity or for which tasks the employee is assigned to or which project the employee is assigned to okay and also the employee has the ability to update let's say if employee has uh, you know uh, working on any different uh, kind of event also they have the ability to write down that it will be a comment that employee is there while logging in the time employee can also update the comment that okay for so and so activity um, like for a ad hoc request right so for so and so activity i was working for three to four hours during this time let's say um, the employee has the ability to record the comments also okay and uh, so this is all about the um, self-service time entry, okay? Then how about the mobile and web time clock, okay? So when we, um, uh, and the employer will be uh, logging in the time using the mobile device, right? So there are multiple ways the employer can check in and check out or they'll directly the employee have the ability to enter the number of hours worked in the system, okay? So when we uh, say the web time clock, check in and check out, right? So there'll be an option called web clock. So when the employee will checking in, so it will automatically capture the um, geographical uh, location the employee is located in. Let's say when the employee is in QS, and then based on the system time, the employee check-in time, the system will capture the employee check-in time, okay? And uh, similarly, like let's say employee is going for taking any break in between, or if employee is going for any meal break, then also the system will capture, this is the time like check out for a meal break, and then the system will capture the time based on the different uh, location, geographical location um, based on the user is located, okay? And uh, um, also uh, the worker input automatic date and time stamp, right? Which I was talking about, the system will automatically capture the date and time stamp based on the system, um, system time zone, how it has been set up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so these are the, uh, you know, mobile uh, and web uh, time clock. And uh, let's talk about the efficient uh, approvals, right? Like whenever the employee is submitting any time, of course, that will be, it will go for the manager for the approval. And, and it is depending on the organization, how they wanted to keep the approval process. Let's say it should go to the manager's manager or, um, it should go to the HR business partner or regional HR uh, based on the particular uh, projects, then the approval system can be built in Workday in such a way that it will route for multiple level of approval too, okay? So manager uh, can initiate a mass approval. Let's say uh, there are, uh, you know, 20 or 30 reportees and uh, who have submitted the time, right? So and it is very difficult for a manager to, so when the employees submit the time, right, it comes to the manager workday inbox. So there is a concept called in workday, um, every employee will have a dedicated notification alerts and the inbox item, okay? So whenever the uh, employee receive any kind of accent to be performed, right? Let's say manager, uh, when the employee submit, then the manager will get a accent related uh, item, right? Whether to approve or to reject or to send back or deny. So these kind of uh, items are called as a accent related item. So it will come and sit in the workday inbox, okay? And uh, manager will have the ability to view that, go 
each by one by one employee. So whenever there are, let's say there are 20 employees, so immediately the manager will receive a workday inbox item. So which talks about more about that, okay, say today, um, let's say the employee is submitted for a week. So for a particular week, at every each and every day, the employee has entered how many hours of time, uh, how many hours has been entered for which activity and for which work. But if the employee has entered any time of, okay, this is my uh, report is, and uh, here the employee has entered the time of, so out of, let's say for a weekly time seat, out of five days, the employee has worked for three days and two days, the employee has taken the time off. So the employee will have, uh, the manager is, will have the visibility for a detailed visibility of what has been entered by, what has been submitted by the employee. So the manager either can go and then view to the each request and then approve one by one request. Or if employee uh, manager has any concern, let's say, no, um, I think the employee has, not enter proper hours, then the employee has, um, the, uh, you know, the manager can uh, send back for correction or manager can reject, deny the request also. So this is like how the approval process the manager can do, like for each single and sing for each single uh, activity that the manager has received from an employee, okay. And also, if there are more reportees, then it is very tedious job, right? The manager has to go one by one, click on one by one, one by one, the inbox item, and then approve the request. So there is also a, something called the mass approvals, where the manager will perform certain tasks to access the mass approval, and uh, where the manager can see, okay, here is my these many reportees. Well, this is the time period, let's say for 1st of March to the uh, 15th of March, the employee has entered these many employees. This is the employee cost center, and these are the projects that employee uh, has been, my report this has been entered, and this is the volume. So directly the manager can easy way for the manager to mass approve all the entries, okay? Which is a seamless process for a manager. So. The workday also support the mass approval um, uh, in workday. And uh, also there are, uh, you know, the exception approval. Um, let's say, like in payroll, right, we have the um, pay periods. So period started, period ended. And to log the payroll, let's say we have a particular payroll, period started, period ended, and we log the pay. Uh, pay period. This is the day that we are going to log for a particular period. Okay, so that the none of the employees can make any changes to their data for that particular period. Okay, and then the payment will be processed. So similarly, here also there is a time. Um, there is a concept for the time block period. Okay, so when the employee there is a particular period is defined. Let's say if it is a monthly or biweekly. Uh, pay period. So if the system based on the system config reasons, the um, after the time lock in period, the employee cannot go and enter, uh, make any changes to the time entry. Okay, within that period, when the time period is open, the employee can go ahead and then make any changes. How many times they may, they can go ahead and then submit the time. But once it is locked, then system will not allow to enter any time. But let's say in case of any exception, let's say, okay, the employee has forgot to enter and submit any time, forgot to enter and submit any time, then the employee has gone ahead with the manager approval, like manually know here due to my some reason that I have not entered. Then there is also an exception that they, during that period for that employee, the, pay, the time lock-in period can be changed. And then also the um, the employee can go and enter the time, which is outside of your day time uh, lock-in period, and then it will go. Once the employee submit, it will it goes for the approval, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how our um, work the uh, 
uh, the self-service time entry and then we can enter to the mobile and web time clock and how it is, you know, how the approval system happens in time tracking. Um, awesome. Yeah, Raj, you wanted awesome. to? Yes, uh, that's that's great, actually. So, Sirisha, do you have any questions? I wanted to add on a couple of pointers, but before that, do you have any questions, Sirisha? Uh, I think it was very detailed uh, explained. Do you have any questions in terms of, you know, self-service time entry, uh, how exactly mobile and clock uh, web time clock work and you know what about the approvals and you know the thing about you know retro approvals exceptions and all that do you have any questions um so so it says like uh, they can enter on the mobile also sir so setting up for, for mobile is there any special needs need to be done for uh, mobile yeah you yeah exactly so that's a that's a good question actually uh so for mobile obviously you have to enable certain things but everything the logic which you created on the web version right will work on the mobile okay there are additional capabilities as well uh which can be added but obviously those those would be specific to mobile but from from the experience of it a lot of clients prefer it and a lot of clients do not prefer it the clients which prefer all this would be clients mm -hmm. where uh, you know people are in sales Right? They don't have to go into office and they're just logging their hours on mobile, right? But usually, if you see majority of the clients, majority of the people, majority of the users, they prefer using web version or the clock version, right? Because either they have to come to office to swipe information or to swipe their cards and work, or they are coming to factory to work, or they are using their web versions, right? So... If you see the current model of how the world it is being hybrid, right? So usually mm -hmm. a lot of people kind of prefer using, you know, uh, uh, the mobile versions as well. But but like like I said, it requires certain additional changes as well. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you have to enable it as well, but not not so much effort in comparison to what you will feel in uh, SAP, right? You might you might uh, get your Fury application created or you know your have you have different type of mobile apps for different versions it is all intuitive it is all you know uh, reactive in nature that depending on the screen even if you open an iPad or a mobile or, or you know iPhone or an Android phone everything would work pretty fine mm -hmm. yep. so very limited effort is required but from a tech side uh, you know certain aspects are there uh, not, nothing fancy, you know. Uh, it is more of an enabling it. If if I if if I answer in single word, we just have to enable it. Okay, and also, is there any specific configuration that needs to be done at the timesheet level? Because, um, like in SAP, we have a functionality like cats. So, do we have any like kind of setup that needs to be done at uh, for configuring the timesheets? Uh, no, no, no. So I get the question actually. Uh, so. So usually on the on the CATS configuration side, right? You usually uh, mm -hmm. cross application timesheets, right? Basically ensuring mm -hmm. that you know uh, the end to end happen from a mobile perspective. No, everything whatever you configure for the web version would work for the mobile version. Okay. Exceptions are there, which we'll talk more. But in general, you don't have to do anything extra. You just have to enable certain things, and then they mm -hmm. would work plug and play. You don't have to worry too much. So that's where if I see, if you compare from SAP, it is very fast in that, right? Okay. So in general, like clients, they have like specific requirements that the employee cannot go back like more than six months. So the timesheet should not like let the employee to go back after a certain like for period like to modify the timesheet. So those kind of, uh, I mean, in things we can configure uh, here, right? Exactly. So like, like Pushpa mentioned, right. Uh, in terms of that, you know, if I talk about that, uh, just a second. Yeah. In terms of that, it depends on the pay period actually. So okay. let's, let's look at pay periods, right. Different pay periods are there where people work from, you know, uh, let's, let's talk a bit about an employee who is getting paid monthly, right. Mm -hmm. You are paid for the Feb month already. If you are mm -hmm. changing something, you are not allowed to change. So a lot of eligibility is driven using that. You know, it's you don't have to do anything extra. It would be, you know, immediately only. You know, by default, it works on the pay period, but you can put additional validations as well. Usually, mm -hmm. if you are paid for the previous month, you cannot change the data. That is how, by default, it works. Okay. How about like if the employee can go back until six months? 
no you cannot technically you cannot until okay. unless you want an exception but in general no okay okay, okay. i'm good i don't have any other questions okay perfect i think i think this is pretty much it you know in terms of basics i think we have covered a lot of things today i like i said right i think the tomorrow session we'll talk more about all these basics first i know there are a couple of things which i want to cover on actionable reporting and the calculation part and this slide which is really important why i am mm -hmm. giving more time to the basics is you know because we have to look at uh, you know your mm -hmm. understanding of multiple modules talking to each other so i think mm -hmm. in terms of covering the basics i think we covered a lot uh, in terms mm -hmm. of you know uh, pay periods there are a couple of discussions pending which i will take tomorrow mm -hmm. where you know we can talk about all these exceptions all these uh, things from an admin perspective and you know from a reporting standpoint for example like you said right how the six months if someone is going to enter uh, you know sometime back in time right how do we handle that and those type of scenarios because configuration as soon as we deep dive into configuration you have to look at the use cases as well right so you will find while you know as as much as you start working on it and uh, you know in the upcoming sessions you will realize a lot of things which you had to do in sap you know extra or create a configuration of things you don't mm -hmm. have to do a lot of things here it's already provided you know there are certain features which are just by default assumed for example oh. if you are paid in the previous month you know ideally you cannot edit the information you know you are paid for that time already so those kind of things we'll talk more about it but hope the session was good for you uh, tomorrow with some more uh, basic uh, of the time tracking like how it has been done and then we'll proceed okay okay thanks take care guys